Internal Revenue Service IRS Tax News. Good record keeping is an essential element of tax planning. IRS Tax Tip 2020-100, August 11, 2020. Now is a good time for people to begin thinking about next year's tax return. While it may seem early to be preparing for 2021, reviewing your record keeping now will pay off when it comes tax time to file again. Here are some suggestions to help taxpayers keep good records. Taxpayers should develop a system that keeps all their important information together. So it used to be you get all this information basically by mail and anything that's a 1099 form or W-2 or anything that's going to be tax related or record keeping that you want to keep, you can put that into a file. Obviously, now we have a lot of stuff that's going to be online uh, information. So they might be giving you your tax preparation documents in a pdf file or some format uh, such as that and therefore you could start to save that information electronically if you have business information then that's going to be a bit more complex because you're gonna have to track that information using possibly software like quickbooks or something like that and make sure that you have that up to date and are working on it now it might be easier to do if times are slower than they may be at the end of the year <laughs> in order to to pick that information up back the text they can use software program for electronic record keeping. So that would be something like QuickBooks. They could also store paper documents in a labeled folder. Throughout the year, they should add tax records to their files as they receive them. This includes Notice 1444, your economic impact payment, and unemployment compensation documents. So these are probably documents that, well, one of them certainly is a document that is new to anybody that's receiving it. That's going to be the economic impact payment. So remember that the economic impact payment has to do with the tax filing for uh, 2020, which will be filed in 2021, even though you got paid on it, you know, based on information that they knew about in prior years, that was really kind of a projection. They took prior years in order to project uh, what, what's happening at this point in time with a fairly basic kind of set of standards and then made the payments based on that information, but they're actually tied to the uh, 2020 return which are going to be filed in 2021 therefore you want to make sure that you're keeping that economic impact payment information so that you can provide it to the tax preparer or use it within tax preparing uh, time and then if there's any problem with that payment that's when it should kind of wash itself out at that point in time also unemployment there's many many more people that are receiving unemployment compensation now than has been in the past so there's many people that are going to be receiving unemployment for the first time uh, unemployment can be a kind of compensation so then you got to consider whether the unemployment you know if and when unemployment is going to be taxable so you because you got the you know you get an income from unemployment so you want to make sure that you're keeping that information they're going to provide you information for it that you can then use to to prepare the tax return just make sure you're holding on to that because that's probably something different for many people i'm sure it is than has been happening in prior years having records handy makes preparing a tax return next year easier taxpayers should notify the irs there's a link to that here if their address changes so if your address changes obviously you want to you want to let the irs know so you probably have a list of people that are important to to <laughs> give them your new address uh make sure that the irs is on that list uh, they should also notify the Social Security Administration of a legal name change to avoid a delay in processing their tax return. Review their tax return to make sure they don't overlook any credits or deductions. Double check credits and deduction. Records that taxpayers should keep include receipts, cancel checks, and other documents that support income, including any unemployment compensation. So if you, ha if you have a business, of course, then you're going to have to do this more so than... Uh, most individuals because you, you're going to have business related deductions and you want to make sure that you're keeping that record keeping as well taxpayers should also keep records related to property they dispose of or sell they must keep these records to figure their basis for figuring gains or losses so if you dispose of property so that would be something that you that uh, you might be receiving a gain on like a capital gain uh, then you're, you're going to want to keep the records on that if you're going to have to record the gain that you would be receiving as you basically sell uh, property. So you want to make sure you have that information to properly record the gain on uh, sales. Taxpayers should keep records for three years from the date they filed the return. Taxpayers who have employees must keep all employment tax records for at least four years after the tax is due or paid, whichever is later. 
So notice that the normal statute of limitations, meaning if you file the tax return, then they usually have like three years in order for them to the normal statute of limitations, which means they, they're able to audit you any time for basically any reason within that three year period. They might just randomly select you and look over and audit uh, something or they might pick something up and then and then send you a letter and have a question about some item on that. Uh, so after the three year period, then they're, then you're after the statute of limitations. But note, if there's a substantial error, then the IRS can still uh, come back and, and take a look at it. So even if you're clearing that statute of limitations, uh, it's possible that they can come back uh, after that point in time. A lot less likely that it would happen. But if there's a substantial error, then it's possible that they could uh, take a look at it. So I would actually keep them, you know, longer than that, like five years, maybe. <laughs> but but and, and if you have anything that's related to employment, then there's a lot more risk uh, with uh, with employment. So so those records, if you're an employer and you have employee records, you want to hold on to the employee records. I would hold on to them, you know, almost indefinitely. But like seven years, I would hold on to the to the employee records just in case anything comes back and there's a issue with it you want to have uh, all your documentation handy on that and again you want to have the documentation in a way that that you can actually figure out what happened three years later so when you make your tax return put together your notes you'd like to put together your notes in such a way that if you came back three years later and you have no idea you've totally forgot everything about this time period it's it's past i'm not thinking about that anymore you can go back and figure it out from the notes hopefully uh, is what you would like to be able to do all right back to the text irs.gov has several tools taxpayers can use to stay updated on important tax information that they may help uh, with tax planning people can also download the irs to go app there's a link to that here which irs uh, youtube watch irs youtube so there's a link to the irs youtube channel which is highly popular videos and follow the agency on social media more information there's a publication for more information down below there'll be links to that information there'll be a link to this in the description